Morning, Yukari. Still half asleep. I forced my eyelids open. If you're going to sleep, I'd much rather you did it in a futon. Well, I had it intended to fall asleep. I raise both arms and stretch. I'm a mass of aches and pains thanks to falling asleep while seated in the chair. What time is it now? It's just turned 5 a.m. That means you can still sleep some more, right? 5 a.m. Isn't it early for you to be up? Well, after it occurred to me that you'd been shut up in the library for a whole night, I couldn't help it. Her voice is dry and disapproving as she drapes a padded kimono over my back. Hmm. I return to my room. Ah, yes. Yukari, you don't have to wake me up later. Don't you have lectures? She frowns. I feel like I'm being chewed out for playing hooky. Starting in the afternoon. I've got something else to do until then. I see. Please, try to be careful. Yukari leaves my room. She's probably concerned for my health. Hence the grim look. Yukari is such a good sister. After a light three hour nap, which would place the time at eight o'clock, I take a train to Kakadano Baba. The autopsy results must be done by now. Oh, if it isn't Tokusaka san. Natsumi is smoking a cigarette outside the hospital door. Good morning, Natsumi san. Have you finished with the autopsy? If I wasn't finished, then would I be lazing about out here? Uzumi san came by earlier and dropped off a report. I take it the victim's been identified? That's right. It's even been printed in today's newspaper. After saying that, Natsumi san heads inside, cigarette still clamped between her teeth. Well, that's some good news, at least we know who the body is. Words can't describe the stench inside the autopsy room. So, where shall we start? Of course, Natsume-san doesn't seem to be bothered by it. Why don't we start with the report Uzumi-san brought me? Natsume-san pulls some documents from an envelope and reads aloud. The deceased is Takigawa Yumi, a student that attended Oizumi School in Nerami Ward. It says that her parents reported her disappearance on the evening of the 8th. March 8th. A lot of time has passed between then and when she was found. That's right. The elapsed time of death is also around that time. Do you suppose she was hidden for a while? At the very least, there's a base of operations. Some place the killer can hide the corpse. If we could locate that base, it'd be a breakthrough. What about the state of the body, Natsume-san? The direct cause of death was trauma to the spinal cord. It looks like the killer broke her neck while she was still alive. However, the right arm appears to be severed immediately beforehand. That's horrible. And, as you predicted, there was a broken egg in her abdomen cavity. Just like the previous girl, there were also signs that she was sexually active. However, however, there are scars from the dilatation of the cervical canal. To put it simply, they're abortion scars. Out of curiosity, I re-examined the previous course, corpse, and she had them too. They've both undergone abortions. This could be an important lead. It could. Damn. To have an abortion, you need a doctor to do the procedure. They might know these girls' part. Who these girls' partners were. 
I should get in touch with Uzumi after this. I'm not done yet. The victim this time had drugs used on her. A shot of morphine in the left arm. Moreover, it was a near lethal dose. So, there's a chance the killer may be a doctor? Hey guys, do you recall that one guy, Toko's uncle, who's a doctor, who I said, this guy's the killer? Anyone remember that? He happens to run a, uh, a clinic. Don't know what kind of clinic it is yet, but he runs a clinic. Ah, uh, yes. Let us see. Don't you know how easy it is to get a hold of morphine these days? If I sold it in the right places, I could make a killing. And narcotics control couldn't stop me. That's when we send idly toys with a small bottle of medicine. She's joking about dealing drugs. Isn't she? Oh yeah, Tokisaka-san, you asked me to run a handwriting analysis yesterday, right? She knows... she shows me the torn fragments in question. I might be able to figure something out, so let me take a look at what you brought. I pull the sample out of my notebook and hand it over. Here. Alright, let's take a look. Natsumi-sen sits in a chair and compares the sample to the torn fragment. Honestly, Tokisaka-san, you just collected a random sample, didn't you? I was hoping for the, for the same kanji. This won't let us see the finer details. Even so, I can't be telling people that's what's actually written on here, can I? It wouldn't bother me any. She peers at the characters through a jeweler's loop. Hmm. Nope. Can't find anything? Yeah. Sorry, Tokisaka-san. But I'm certain the person who wrote it isn't among these. I see. Or it could be Nene, I suppose, since she's kind of a doctor. But it looks like I've miscalculated. Ah, uh, damn, I should've got Nene. That's me, son. May I borrow your telephone? If you bring it back. It's not like I'm going to run away with it. I've got to get in touch with Uzumi. Hey, Rieji. Uzumi, I have something I need done ASAP. Contact the... Obs... That place in the area and find out whether their victims have visited their hospitals. Those things. So I just find out where they had their abortions, right? One more thing. I also need to know about the occupations of the family's victim, victims' families, and if they have any skeletons in their closets. So, you're attacking things from that direction, eh? Alright, I'll look into it. Thanks, man. <laughs> now it's my turn. It's about Nichizona Yui. It seems that she had a boyfriend. A boyfriend? Sato Ayumi told me she was certain that Yui didn't interact with members of the applicant's sex, but... I don't have a name yet, but I'm still looking into it. Okay. I got it. I put down the receiver. I can feel it. Things are starting to slide into place. Oh yeah. It's gonna be fun. It's past noon by the time I reach the academy. Unsurprisingly, there are no students outside. Morning lectures should be over soon. The bell rings as I enter the building. The students filing out of the classrooms are as quiet as ever. Girls their age are being murdered, and students from their own classes have vanished. And yet you never know it, looking at them. The sound of a slap echoes through the silent hallway. What was that? I crane my neck to see a crack, crack, crowd gathering near one of the first year classrooms. And at its center is... Orihime. It looks like she's confronting a first year student. The girl is holding her face and crying, so Orihime must have slapped her. Get a hold of yourself. Don't allow some meaningless rumor to lead you astray. Orihime scolds her. A stern expression on her face that I've never seen before. A 
Suppose I need to put a stop to this. Come on now. Calm down, Orihime-san. What happened? I pushed through the crowd to get to Orihime-san. Tokusaka sensei It's nothing at all. This girl was raising a fuss, and I was merely consoling her. Orihime replies with a clearly forced calm. Doesn't slapping her seem a little extreme? You're right. I'm sorry. That was rude of me. However, whatever the circumstances, making a racket is unacceptable. Isn't that kind of what she did? After admonishing the girl, Orihime passes by my side. Orihime-san. What is it? Several steps in front of me, she turns around. This rumor of yours... There's no such thing. She cuts me off, turns on her heels, and leaves. Just a rumor. Really? Whatever it is, it's clearly gotten under her skin. When I enter the faculty room, Vice Principal Sekai is sitting by the stove, reading a newspaper. Oh, Tokusaka Sensei. He puts down the paper and stands. I apologize for my lateness. Don't mention it. You've been busy, correct? Yeah. I've got something to talk to you about regarding that. I'll be devoting more time to the investigation from now on. So the days I'll be able to teach will decrease. I see. Have you discovered anything? I think we're going to blow it wide open soon. However, if I were you, I wouldn't hold my breath for good news. I pick up his newspaper from the chair. Reporters are speculating that the body found in Shinjuku, uh, Shaku-ji yesterday is related to the one from Thomas Cemetery. She's from a different school, but the same age. Yeah. Seki doesn't ask anything. Ah, right. Seki-san. Do the words black egg mean anything to you? He inclines his head at my question. Black egg. No, I have no idea. I see. I guess the teachers don't know anything about it. If I want information on this, it looks like I'll have to go straight to the source. After I've been in my pep room for a while, a certain noisy person arrives. Oh yes. Yay! Oh, Tokusaka Sensei's here! Ow. Well, where else would I be? You were late today, weren't you? I have an excuse. I had other things to do. That is such a good excuse. Oh, I'm sorry, I had, a, I had other things to do. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Detective work? She was just jumping. That's, that's, that's pretty cute. Tojiko's eyes are shining. If it were, do you really think I'd be able to tell you? Ah, so that's how it is? And here I am with this juicy information that I went to great pains to get and bring to you. What's it about? Hmm, I'm not going to tell someone who's, who is going to listen with an attitude like that. This is quite infuriating. Well, I don't intend to lose my temper over something like this. <laughs> Suit yourself. There's a certain art to handling people like her. Wait, wait, wait! Are you serious? Just going to walk away from this? It's a big scoop, you know? Sure enough, Tojiko takes the bait. Her desire to talk got the better of her. Fine, fine, I'll hear you out. Start talking. Wow, you say that in a way that kind of pisses me off. Well, whatever. You know the case with the one dismembered body in Inokashira Park? Right? The one where they still haven't identified the victim or the killer? Yeah, I know it. I haven't talked to Rico about the particulars in any case. I'll have to feign indifference. 
A first-year girl told me that right after it happened, she saw the Black Madonna in the park. Mm. Oh? You like that? Well, I guess it's because I'm the one who told you about this from the beginning. Tojiko looks triumphant. She got me good. Well, in the end, it wasn't really the Black Madonna. Just a kid that was playing around with the black sheet. Wait. Wait a minute. Tojiko. My name isn't Tojiko! Whatever you say. So, the first year student mistook a kid for the Black Madonna. It seems that way. Well, the long and short of it is that she knew the rumor. It's not just her either. A bunch of the first years know about it are pretty spooked. I wonder if the com commotion in the hallway I saw earlier was about this. Probably. Are there a lot of them? There's only a few. But they're not just from here. It sounds like people elsewhere know about it too. Hey, Tuzuriko. I told you not to call me- Huh? Did the two girls who went missing know about the rumor? Uh, yeah. Probably. I'm sure they knew. I see. In other words, this means that around the beginning of the year, before Nishizono Yui had even disappeared, the rumor had already been circulating. What is it based on? Did that help a little bit? Yeah, it gave me some food for thought, Tojiko. <laughs> Why do I keep telling you? Once Tojiko was gone, I decide to head for the infirmary to meet with, meet with Nene. Even though it's not yet time for the afternoon lectures to start, the hallways are quiet as ever. Because no one talks ever. As I prepare to descend the stairs for the first floor, I notice Orihime on the landing. Tokisaka-sensei. Is something wrong? Or he may come to the stairs, stopping in front of me. Um... Something's wrong with her. I can't se I can't sense that dignified air she normally gives off. Okay. Um... Sensei. What is it? I ask her gently. Judging by her expression, whatever it is, it's serious. There's no reason for me to drag it out against her will. So all I can do is wait for her to speak. Um... She looks like she's scared of something. Could it be that rumor? Orihime-san. She shudders when I speak her name. It... It's nothing. Excuse me. Her face downcast, Orihime pushes past me. Orihime-san. If you feel like talking, come to my prep room. I'll try to help you out as best I can. I wonder if my voice can reach her. I'll watch her back as she departs. Interesting. Ah, uh, it's Toko! Woo! Well, if it isn't Tokusaka-sensei! Toko is the first person I see upon entering the infirmary. <laughs> Were you sleeping again? I note her half-closed eyelids. I had a good night's sleep and everything, but yeah. After she says that, Toko brings her hand up to her mouth and stifles a yawn. <laughs> Still pretty sleepy. I guess I'll nap a while longer. Is it really okay to sleep that much? I suppose you have a point. Apparently, changing her mind, she raises her head and rubs her temples. Ah, right. Aren't we going to the art museum tomorrow? You didn't forget, did you? Yep. Mamiya, what's his face? Says exhibit. So, you really don't remember. It's Mamiya Shinzo. Toko laughs, correcting me. You've got no memory for things that don't interest you, Mr. Detective. Well, it's not like I forgot intentionally. But it's true that my interest level is low. I believe that in order 
to make a hobby out of appreciating works of art, you need to have a certain amount of composure. I don't have that, or even a sense of admiration for the paintings. The door to the infirmary opens, and Nene enters. Oh, if it isn't Tokisaka sensei What's the matter? I came here because I had something I wanted to discuss with you. M me? She glances at Toko out of the corner of her eye. I can see on the third wheel here. Well, Tokusaka sensei I'll be counting on you tomorrow. Toko lightly pats me on the shoulder on her way to the door. Well, well. She's quite frank today. Is she always coming here to rest? Haven't we had this conversation before? She's been coming over a lot recently. It seems that she comes and takes light naps here during breaks. I guess she's got something wrong with her body. Well, it could be. You're the school nurse, and you don't know her medical status? Ah, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. There's a lot of things going on at that age. For a second, her expression turns apologetic. So, what was it you wanted to ask me? Mm, nay, nay. I'm going suspicious of her. Right. It's along the lines of what you just said. Regarding Nishizono Yuri and Imamara Huruka. Haruka. Ah. Just like... I'd like you to show me the medical records. Um, that's... Even if you're on the case, it's not something I can just show to a man. The information in there is critical. Please. There's just one thing I need to check. What would that be? If they got pregnant, and if they had abortions. I had a feeling this information is key to, the breaking, to cracking the case. And that's the single hardest answer for me to give. Even so, it's important. This is kept strictly confidential, you understand? Do you realize how much this place cares about its appearance? In spite of her words, she seems to have given up and pulled some documents from a drawer. Nishizono-san and Imumura-san. Well, it's exactly as you suspected. Both became pregnant and both terminated the pregnancy. What hospital did they go to for their abortion surgery? <laughs> the Kuchiki Pathological Research Institute in Nakano. Kuchiki-san's grandfather is the director of that place. Well, looks like another link to that goddamn uncle of hers. What? I remember Toko and her uncle, Fumiya, mentioning that her grandfather manages a large hospital in Tokyo. But why is it tied to the academy? The resident obstetrician is Dr. Yamanochi. I have her come here for the periodic health examinations as well. Nene sensei, I'm sorry to impose, but could you contact her, please? I'd like to have a talk with her right now. Sure, I don't mind. She's probably at the hospital. Thanks. After leaving the infirmary, I go to the faculty room to tell Sekai that I'll be leaving to continue my investigation. Oh, Tokisaka-sensei. I still don't like this guy, but regardless. Kusaka, seated in front of the stove, calls out to me. Kusaka-sensei, is Vice Principal Sekai around? Seki, whatever. I'm real bad with names, just so y'all know. Well, I guess y'all know that now. It looks like he just left to go to the bathroom, but I think he'll be back soon. Never saying that, Kusaka takes some medicine from a small white paper bag and pops it into his mouth. Got a cold? I've been having these killer headaches recently. I'm not exactly the top of my form. He fills a cup with hot water from the kettle. When I've got time to spare, 
I go to that hospital in Nakano, but it really hasn't been getting any better. Kusaka grumbles, smiling weakly. Nakano, you mean the Kachiki Pathological Research Institute? Oh, so you've heard of it. Right. You talk to Kuchiki-san often, don't you? Yeah, something like that. I can't say that I only learned about the hospital a few moments prior. Tokusaka-sensei, please be careful. Kusaka lowers his voice. The academic chairperson is out on an extended business trip, so for now it's fine. But once that's done, you won't be able to talk to the students much. I see. One thing after another. With conditions like these, it's no surprise that some students rebel and hide things. Oh, so long as you're here, do you know the rumor about a black egg, Kusaka-sensei? I'd best ask every, every, everybody I can in the academy. A black egg? I don't know the details, but I've heard the students using that phrase before. Were those first-year students? Hmm, I'm not sure about that. I only heard people talking about it in the hallways. Thank you. No, I've done nothing to deserve your thanks. Kusaka chuckles. Oh, Tokusaka-sensei, what's wrong? Sekai's returned. Vice Principal Sekai. Seki, I've got some business to attend to right now, so I'll be taking my leave. <clears throat> of course, I understand. Be careful. Well, if you'll excuse me. I bow to Seki and Kusaka and quickly leave the academy. Seki. The old guy's name, I keep like switching it up and mispronouncing it and pronouncing it differently. I, I really need to stick with something. But for now, I take the Chiao line to Nakako. Nakano. After walking for a short while, a large hospital comes into view. Doesn't really look that large from here. Anyhow, Kuchiki Pathological Research Institute is inscribed on the gatepost near the entrance. So, this is the place. It's a lot bigger than I'd expected. There's a stream of people coming in and out. I may as well join them. Why are hospitals so white? I guess it's supposed to be like some reason like uh, it promotes the cleanliness and healing vibe because if it was dark it'd be kind of scary and stuff it, it like makes more inviting and stuff but it's fucking uh, I don't know I'd rather have a dark hospital than a fucking bright one blinding me and shit inside it's dead silent that's not so unusual for, for unusual for a hospital but I'm stuck struck by how similar it looks to the academy there's no sign of energy from the people I pass by it's almost as though I never left the academy at all hmm Hey, that area's off limits except to staff. Upon hearing a voice from behind, I stop. You don't look like a patient. Who are you? I turn to see an elderly man in a lab coat staring at me suspiciously. Mm, I'm sorry. I came here because I had some business with Dr. Yamanochi. Yamanochi-kun? Ah, so you're the person from the Oba Girls Academy. Yes, that's correct. Looks like the message has gotten around. The problem now is whether this guy knows my true identity. Let's not stand around and talk. Come with me. He leads me down a corridor, and we pass through a doorway. Director's office is written on the door plate. Is he the director? That means... He's Toko's grandfather! Excuse me, may I call you Kuchiki-san? I'm the director of this institution. Kuchiki Yatsuda. Yatsuda. I don't know. Anyhow, I've heard about you. You're a detective, correct? <laughs> yeah. What you're investigating is none of my concern. I only ask that you don't disturb my patients. That goes without saying. He hardly needs to tell me that. You had some business, business with Yamanochi-kun, correct? Wait here a moment, and I'll have someone show you to her. He leaves the room. I take a quick look around. A large painting is hung on the wall. I don't see a painting. 
The description reads Mamiya Shinzu Artis Koyatosis. Ah, words. I can hardly forget that name after hearing it constantly for the past couple of days. Ah, so that's the kind of stuff he does. So, you have an interest in Mamiya Sensei's paintings. The director has returned. Mm, yeah, kinda. He's an old friend of mine. That painting was a personal gift from him. I guess he wants to brag a bit. The male doctor next to him coughs. <laughs> ah, sorry. This is our anesthesiologist. Muraz. Um, he also works as the director when I'm not around. I just trust that guy immediately. I'm gonna call him Noki. I'm Noki, pleased to meet you. I'm Tokisaka. Nice meeting you as well. I'll show you to the... I'll show you to Dr. Yamanoshi's place right now. Right this way, please. Honestly, what the hell does the director intend to do? Intend by doing this? <clears throat> as soon as we're out of the hallway, he curses softly. Showing patient records to non-staff and to a detective of all people? It's absolutely outrageous. Just to let you know, I've been entrusted with this by the police. Now words do nothing to place it. Look, we're here. Finish your business and get the hell out of here. <coughs> Depositing me at the entrance of the uh, that ward, he turns and around and quickly leaves. That could have gone better. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. It's natural for detectives to attract scorn, since they dig up other people's personal information. Oh look! It looks exactly the same as the director's office! I was not expecting someone that cute. Okay, damn. Yes, it is. A woman who emerges gives me a doubtful look. My name is Tokisaka, and I've come here from Open Girls Academy. Right. You're the one who said he wanted to discuss some students. I'm Yamanoshi Kaharu. Koharu. And I'm the resident of that fucking word. I don't know how to pronounce that word. I really don't like it. Koharu bows deeply. I'm gonna call it an abortionist. How about that? That sounds fucking fine to me. I know this is sudden, but I'd like to get straight to the point. Is it true that this is where uh, Nishizona Yui and Imamura Haruka had their abortions? Hmm. Yes, that's correct. The procedures were performed here. She doesn't sound happy about it. There's been a lot of them recently. I just got a call from the police regarding teen pregnancies. From the police. Did they ask about two murdered girls, Kozumi K and Takigawa Yumi? Boom, surprised. Eh? How do you know that? It wasn't that long ago I asked Uzumi to look into it. He really moved fast. I asked them to do it. I had a hunch they'd find something like this. I see. Well, I'm certain those two also had procedures done here, however... Don't worry. I don't think this place is involved with these murders. Is that so? Some of the tension drains out of her. Are there really that many? Yeah, not just those who are pregnant. Girls who think they might be pregnant also come here for consultations. Even some girls from Oba Girls Academy. I see. I'm having a hard time reconciling this news with their usual behavior. I think the students come here because I frequently visit the academy for medical examinations. Did anything else about them worry you? Let's see. They were never very clear about it, but it sounded like the pregnancy could have been the result of prostitution, or perhaps rape? Prostitution, you say? Their attitude wasn't that of a girl who had sex with her lover. It wasn't the anxiety of a first pregnancy, but rather the fear of carrying some unknown man's child. Koharu's eyebrows droop. She looks on the verge of tears. 
And that's the feeling I got from those girls. Alright. Thank you. Well, that was a quick, uh, discussion. Well. Thanking Koharu, I leave the room. There's an ashtray set in the corner of the hallway, so I light up a cigarette there. Phew. The corpse's vaginas showed no trace of violent sex. That means that the killer didn't rape them. But something about it still nags at me. No, the possibility of rape is low. On the other hand, it's quite likely they were in involved in a prostitution ring. The same age, the same school. There's a lot of correlations there. What if someone's controlling these girls and forcing them into prostitution? Wow, wow, wow. If you think about it, it's a really good point. The way all the girls act, like all, like, uh, like, emotionless and shit at schools. Except for, like, the ones who we know, like Orihime and Toko and Toko's friend and Tojiko and Yukari. The rest of them are, like, all weird. Anyhow, I exit the building, still mulling things over in my head. I guess I should contact Uzumi and talk to him. I'll give him a call later and have him come over to the moon world after or something. Hmm? A man in front of the hospital suddenly catches my eye. Who's this? He's carrying a large bag under his arm and looking around restlessly. Highly suspicious behavior. He certainly doesn't look like one of the hospital staff. Looking around for a little while, the man leaves. What was that all about? Welcome, Tokazaki-kun. Kyoko, could I use the inner seats? There aren't many customers, but I don't want people listening in on my conversation with Uzumi. Hm. Sure, that's fine. Well, we call them inner seats, but they're no different from the others. Welcome, Tokusaka-san. Hatsune comes over with a glass of water. Thanks. Could I get some coffee? Sure, coming right up. She turns around and heads back towards the counter, where Kyoko is. Looks like she's become quite familiar with the layout. Feeling thirsty, I drain my glass in a single gulp. Running around all day wore me out. Oh, welcome, Uzumi-san. Yeah. Uzumi saunters in. <laughs> saunters. That's fucking amazing. It's like, we're, we're there. Saunter. Over here. I know. He replies curtly and sits down across from me. He seems to be in a really bad mood. Sorry, Ajay, did you... What, I hear you found the hospital. Purely by accident. It appears that some of the students of the academy used it. Our two girls? Yep. We keep things vague so that casual listeners won't be able to understand. How is that place? Is it trustworthy? I still don't know. I only got to look around for a little bit. I see. Um, I brought some coffee. Hatsune-chan looks nervously at us. Ah, thanks. Oh, best of luck with your job. With that, she bows and takes her leave. Who is she? Uzumi points after her, curious. I think you've seen her before. She's a product of Takashiro's handiwork. Ah, no wonder. So it was when I was working. Uzumi spoons sugar into his coffee, then fixes his gaze on me. So, about the case, I looked into the victim's families and learned a lot of stuff. And, how did it turn out? First off, Kazumi K, her father found some kind of fake new religion and embezzled donations from his followers. Seems that his behavior was pretty extreme. Uzumi reads off the facts. 
flipping through his notebook. Next up is Takigawa Yui's mother. It seems like she was doing fortune telling in Shinjuku under the name Takinomiya. Maya. She seemed. She's had complaints filed against her by victims for selling vases at outrageous prices as well. Hmm. I flipped through my own notebook, checking for the sins listed in the Divine Comedy. Beneath my head are crushed the others who practice simony before me, now flatted into fissures in the rock. What the hell is that? Simony is the buying and selling of holy things. It includes embezzling alms, and then the fortune teller that used magic had their heads turned backwards and had tears running down their backs. So what does that have to do with it? The passage is from Dante's Divine Comedy. It's possible that the killer is drawing inspiration for the murders from this. It matches the piece of paper stuck in Takigama, ta Takigawa Yumi's mouth. So you're saying that someone who knows that work is the killer? The quote is from a translation by Yamakawa uh, Isaburo, <clears throat> published by Iwakami Books in 1952. I think a lot of people have read it. Yep. So, a person among the suspects who reads that would stand out. Then, let me ask you, who should we nominate as suspects? We haven't seen so much the killer's shadow. Ugh. Well, that's what we're searching for at the moment. <laughs> that's if we can identify a single suspect. Well, it's not like we don't have any options. I told you this morning that Ichizoa Yui had a boyfriend, right? I found out his name. It's Mori uh, Yorutsuki. It appears he's a photographer. Is it that guy we saw at the thing? I think it was. A photographer. Can you make a living off of that? <laughs> Lately, it seems you can. There were guys taking photographs on the battlefront, right? You can make money by taking the good ones to the newspapers. Uzumi lights a cigarette. So, he was witnessed by Nochizina Yui's picture on a number of occasions. Oh, taking her picture. God damn it. Could it just be a simple photographer-subject relationship? Well, I wonder about that. Or it is that they had a laid-back mood about them, but we won't know until we look into it more. I still haven't met the man myself. Having said that, Uzumi takes a small photograph from his notebook. I almost forgot. The magazine company he's a correspondent for said that he's going to the art museum in Ueno tomorrow for work. Hey. Uzumi. My eyes are fixed on this photo. This guy. I just saw him. Yep. It's the man who was loitering in front of the <laughs> Kuchiki Pathological Research Institute. Did you talk to him? No. I saw him from a distance. Why was he there? A coincidence? No. Even if it were. We should catch him tomorrow and squeeze him for information. Oh, right. I just happen to be going to Uno tomorrow. To Takashiro's place? Nope. To the art museum in question. Leading around some students. I'm surprised you've got the free time to do that. Well, it's not strictly pleasure. It also involves another case I'm working on. I think of a black-haired girl who talks like a boy, using her name as an excuse for Uzumi. Thanks for the coffee. I open the door and step outside. Whoa! Whoops, sorry about that. I barely sidestep in time to avoid a collision. Um, Kuchiki-san, was it? Y yes Hello. It's Kuchiki Shizuru. I have to apologize for visiting your home out of the blue the other day. <laughs> Not at all. It is my pleasure. Shizuru bows. I'm sorry, but I'm in a hurry to get to Nakano. Ah, then I won't keep you. Going to your father's hospital? 
Y yes. I will see you later. After a few halting bows, she walks in the direction of the station. Hmm. The sun is sunken quite low in the western sky. Well, now there's work to be done. Fuck. Okay. Let's think this through. What work do I gotta do? Can I really go back to Moon World and just fucking piss around? Come on now, no. Oh, let's go to Shinjuku. Nope. Oh, the park's always fun. I've arrived at Inukashira Park. There are a few people here and there, but for the most part, the park is empty. Among the pedestrians, I see Orihime standing by the water's edge. Sweet, maybe we can find out why she was being so odd earlier. Hey, uh, Orihime-san. Ah. She looks up, but there's something odd about her mo movements. Is something wrong? N no, n nothing. She says that. She turns away, facing the pond. Oh, that's right. That incident this afternoon. I'm not exact expecting a reply, but I continue speaking anyway. If there's something eating away at you, isn't there? I know I'm not the best of audiences, but why don't you just try saying what you can? Or he may give no visible response. Wait, for a second there, I could have sworn her shoulders were trembling. I, re I really want to figure out this shit, so let's go ahead and save. Um, here, go, yes, okay. What are we gonna say first? Let's, uh, let's don't ask anything, let's just stay quiet. I can't be the one to bring up the black egg. But things as they are, patience is my only option. A pair of sparrows alight on the railing. Sensei? What is it? For what reason were purple people born into this world? It's a complicated, a completely inappropriate question, given the setting. I have to say something, though. Let's see. That's something I took for granted, so I never really thought about it. Is that normal? Or he may turn to meet my gaze. I've been thinking about that for as long as I can remember. Why I, why people, are born into the world. She looks at something very far away. It's said that people carry sin from the moment of birth, but is life just a means to atone for those sins? If it is, then a life like that is fruitless. You shouldn't think so pessimistically. If you ask me, nobody needs a reason to be born. But I couldn't stand a life where I'm just existing doing as I'm told, not knowing what to do. Even if you weren't born for a special reason, you can find a goal to live for, can't you? I think that's enough. A goal of my own. Or he may mutter softly to herself. I still... I still don't understand. You're still young. You've got a lot of time ahead of you. Even if you make some bad decisions, you've got plenty of chances to set things right. Will the world let me do that? I see no reason why it wouldn't. Orihime stands up. Thank you, Sensei. She bows after saying that. You can come to me anytime for advice. I will. See you. Orihime leaves. She said she couldn't stand a life of doing as she was told. Couldn't. Past tense. Was that just a coincidence? Or has she already committed a sin? I have no choice but to wait for her to tell me herself. Interesting. Well, I guess we're gonna go here! Fuck that! Let's go to the museum. Scope it out before we go there tomorrow. I've come all the way to Uno. 
I remembered that the museum would be closed today, but... Uh-huh. Stella's sitting in a chair by the museum entrance. Looks like she's sleeping, as usual. What do you mean, as usual? You've seen her once before, haven't we? Hey, Stella. I call out as I draw near, but she doesn't even spare me a glance. She's staring fixedly at the ground. Huh? Was That was a snore. So, she's sleeping with her eyes open. I guess she's on the job right now, but there's no reason to wake her. At that moment, Stella gives a little jolt. She looks up at me, blinking. Were you asleep? I wasn't. She shakes her head. No, she was sleeping quite soundly. But no matter. Stella, son, what do you think when you hear the words black egg? And please, don't say own some eggs. Eggs, a symbol of birth. It is said that they represent the resurrection of Christ. Suddenly, she drops into a fluent. She drops into quite fluent Japanese. Christ was crucified and buried in a tomb, hewn out of a rock. On the morning of the third day, he was resurrected. His resurrection from a tomb of rock could be based upon the birth from the shell of an egg. That is quite a leap, however. Having said her piece, she stops, as if tired. Well, she does look like a Christian, so having that much knowledge is surprising. But, the resurrection of Christ isn't just concerned with eggs, though. Chickens and rabbits also appear during Easter. During cold winters, rabbits dig a hole underground and hibernate in it. During springtime, they will emerge. This is also referred to as a rebirth. Phew. Like a puppet whose strings have been cut, Stella settles back in her chair, giving a little yawn. Um, uh, Stella-san? San? And she's asleep again. So, she's asleep again, yep. Hearing so many intriguing things just gave me more questions to ask, but... Just don't catch a cold, alright? Looks like I'll have to go elsewhere. She is my favorite character in this game. Just throwing it out there. I've arrived at, uh, why am I here? That was Natsumi sent in. Hmm. There's a sign hanging from the door. So, my god. Okay. What do you mean, gone home? Gone home. Is she talking about Kyoto? I guess she won't be back here for a while. Well, it's not a big deal. There are other forensic doctors out there. I guess I'll head somewhere else. Why did I go there? I... What? Why would she just open up and leave in the midst of, like, so much murder? I don't get it! Anyhow, I get out of the bath and return to my room for a smoke. Dinner was Mitsutaki. Yukari prepared it for me, but she seemed listless somehow. I suppose she must be tired as well. I've been putting her through a lot of trouble. I guess I should at least wash the dishes every now and then. I stand up, but then Yukari opens the screen and enters. Ah, Yukari, good timing. Today, I'll do the dishes. <laughs> Nissan. Yukari's voice cuts me off. What, did you already finish them? That's not it, Nissan. Her serious tone hangs heavy in the air. Fuck. Wh what's up? Aren't you tired? Don't be silly. What kind of detective gets exhausted by a little legwork? The truth is that I'm not really tired physically. I'm more tired mentally. The present situation has consistently been weighing on me, since we have no idea what the killer's intentions are. The next victim could surface at any time. I think I'm closing in on a motive, but... Please, don't overstress yourself. 
You don't need to worry. But Nissan, you never show your true feelings on the surface. I don't? Maybe it's just my imagination, but I can't bear seeing you like this, Nissan. It breaks my heart. Y Yukari? I, I just wish I could give you strength somehow. You've supported me plenty, up until now. I pat Yukari's head. I guess I don't show my true feelings on the outside, because I'm at work. I've always been like that, so I can't change that part of me instantly. Nissan, could you bear with me for just a little bit longer? Yes, of course. Yukari pulls away. That was weird. Well, Nissan, good night. Yeah, good night. <laughs> Nissan. Don't stay up too late. Please go to bed soon. Yukari returns to her own room. Song 5. Monster Magic. March 14th. The Crescent Moon. And I do believe. I have to say. I've had better mornings than this.